G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing our third and final edition of 2024 Bold Predictions. This is our last chance. And I said in the second one that if there was enough comments on the second video, we would do a third one. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing two parts to it. The first half, I'm gonna be reacting to what you guys said and giving you general comments and my thoughts on your takes. And then at the end, I am actually gonna give you five of my own bold predictions because frankly, I haven't had enough criticism. <laughs> Nah, I'm only joking. I find this sort of stuff fun. So we're gonna crack straight into it. And before I do, if you could do me a favor, consider subscribing to this channel for plenty of AFL content, which has pretty much been daily for about three months now. Great, so the first one I'm gonna to react to is Bunch of Stuff, who says for part three, the addition of Riley Sanders in the midfield group will result in the Bulldogs dominating teams with ease through the middle once again. So even without Riley Sanders, like there's still Bontempelli, McRae, and Liberatore. They're the first three that came to mind. Trelaw is also in that mix. So I do think, think even with Bailey Smith out of this team, it's still going to be a competitive team like with clearances. And Riley Sanders is good enough to genuinely impact that team and improve it. I actually kind of regret not like jumping on the bandwagon a little bit more for him to win the Rising Star because that's kind of my vibe at the moment. But we'll see. I, I just think Riley Sanders is the most equipped drafty to play genuine on ball time this year and is big bodied enough and has the tank enough to be able to impact for not entire AFL games maybe, but for a serious chunk. And therefore, I do think that this is a pretty good prediction. Philly Nation says, Hawthorne small forwards will kick the most goals in the comp compared to other small forward groupings. So we're talking about Bruce, Dylan Moore, Ginnivan, and Nick Watson, and possibly someone else I'm forgetting, but that's pretty. That's a pretty good four there. My personal take here is that the biggest competition in this particular space will be Collingwood, who has a small forward quartet, if you like, of Bobby Hill, Jamie Elliott, Bo McCreary, and Schultz. And, you know, also the fact that a lack of a really clear key forward, outside of my check, if you consider him that, there should in theory be more goals on offer for Collingwood Smalls, whereas Hawthorne, you know, there's Gunston and uh, Mitch Lewis as well, who could take goals away from them and direct attention. I don't know how exactly that plays out, but I, I'm not gonna disagree with this take, although I'd probably bet on Collingwood myself. Adelaide was another team I considered with a bunch of Smalls, like Rankin is a star. And outside of possibly Bruce, he's probably gonna kick the most goals of any small forward in this group that I've mentioned so far between these three teams. But Rochelle is another small forward, kind of. He's, he's taking more stoppages as is Rankin. And then there's Murphy who doesn't necessarily kick a lot of goals. So I think it's probably between Collingwood and Hawthorne and maybe another team that I've missed. But those two teams are the most compelling. So decent prediction. Follow the White Rabbit says that Richmond and the Bulldogs will drop down the ladder this year. So I, you know, I tip Richmond to, to plummet so I can't really critique this too much. Although I do think there's a good chance or a decent chance that I'm wrong about that. Of course, I'm not really married to any of my predictions as such, because at the end of the day, they are just predictions. I, I see a big range with Richmond, but I also see the possibility for them falling down the ladder. But with some luck, that won't happen. So I've made the case that if, if they lose some of their key players like Tom Lynch, Dusty, Toronto, Prestia, it, not for entire seasons, that's ridiculous, but if they miss you know three or four weeks here and there and they never really build up momentum, I don't think Richmond's base under that is super strong, hence why I've made the case. So we'll leave it there for Richmond. With the Bulldogs, I don't think I see that happening. And I do think that their forward line upside is underrated a little bit. Norton, Jamara, Sam Darcy coming into this team and Cody Waitman, that's just four off the top of my head. There's, there's goals there, there's goals there. So there is improvement there for the Bulldogs is my point and they've already got a strong midfield. So I, I don't think I agree with the Bulldogs one. And the Richmond one, I'm not saying it's likely to happen, but I do see the logic a lot better there. Alexander Laird predicts Patrick Cripps to make the All-Australian team, captaining the side and winning the AFL Players Association Best Captain Award. Hard for me to assess. It's certainly possible. Patrick Cripps won a Brownlow like 15 months ago. He is a little bit less predictable than some of these other Brownlow types, other than maybe Ollie Wines, I guess. But So it could go either way. I can't really knock it. And he seems to be a good captain. So I don't disagree with you there. So if he does have a great year, if he does make the All-Australian team, and if Carlton are successful, him being the best captain is very, very possible. So decent prediction, but hard one for me to critique. Hey guys, just want to interrupt this video for one second to let you know that this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is essentially a platform that connects you with credentialed therapists that are trained to listen and help. But I know that starting therapy can be 
a bit of a difficult thing for people. You know, there's aspects of it like, is the right therapist for you necessarily in your area? And you know, some people also find a little bit uncomfortable having a face-to-face -face interaction. But the good thing about BetterHelp, it helps you overcome some of these concerns. You know, you can have your therapy sessions either by a phone call, video chat, or even messaging if that's what you prefer. To get started in this process, all you have to do is click the link in the description of this video. It takes you to a questionnaire, you fill it out, which helps them assess your specific needs. And in most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours. You can then schedule your sessions at a time that's convenient for you. And if you also find that you're matched with someone that isn't quite the right fit, you can switch to another one at no additional cost. If you think you can benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Like I said, you just go to the link in the description or you go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. Clicking that link not only helps support the channel, but it also helps you get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist who can listen and help. Kelstra1997 says, this is a big call, but I would actually rate Simon Goodwin as a real chance to leave the Ds. A few commentators are suggesting the Ds will slip badly this year. And if it happens, then Goody is on very thin ice. After all, Melbourne's record with their coaches is not exactly all that good. Okay, so a bit to unpack here. Um, so Goodwin... At the moment, you know, they've just come off a year where they made top four. What do they finish? Fourth. So on performance, there's not too much to worry about. I think this would rely entirely on Melbourne capitulating. And they would have to capitulate pretty badly. I don't. I think it would have to exceed just missing finals. They'd have to go really badly. And there would have to be talk of internal rift. So I do think it's a bit of a leap. Not a ridiculous leap. Like, I can see why you're pulling at that thread. And after all, it's a bold prediction. So I'm not, not slaughtering that as such. But what I will say is that we don't really, in the AFL, compared to, say, the Premier League, another league that I follow, we don't really sack coaches for missing out on flags. It doesn't happen that much. For all the talk about, like, oh, Fagan's got to win one, Hinkley's got to win one, Chris Scott's got to win one. You know, none of these guys actually lost their jobs. You know, what, what tends to see even successful coaches fail is like really bottoming out, capitulating and talk of internal rift. So it's hard to predict that, but there you go. Jakey Daniel says, Elijah Sardis will win the rising star. I see the logic for it. I think I had him as like the sixth or seventh favorite, but I'm not going to necessarily, you know, die on that hill. Like the rising star is somewhat unpredictable, but I see the potential. He's a high volume player. If he can keep his kicking radar sweet, then that's good. I know he's going to be playing on the wing this year. I think he's probably his best games in the midfield. I mean, he could push into the midfield, but at the moment he's on the wing. So we'll see, we'll see. Tanu Hudson says, Geelong and Richmond slide to the bottom four. So I've commented on um, Richmond. Geelong, again, I just don't see it. I really don't see it. I think their forward line, their back line, and their system is too strong, and their home ground advantage is real. I know they kind of lost that a little bit last year. They lost at least two games at GMHBA, and it might have been a third. In fact, it was three. Bulldogs, Fremantle, GWS. I think that was all of them. But my personal take is that they are still too good, and if they can keep a healthy midfield and see some upside there, then they'll just stabilize. I don't think they'll make finals, but they won't be that far off, in my opinion. El Vilador? El Vilador? Or Vilador? North get on a hot streak at some point in 2024. Kane Corns then leads a media campaign against the AFL over their recent com compensation allowances before the Roos shit the bed and finish in the bot five, bottom five. I like this one. Uh, not because I think that North are going to shit the bed. North, there's definitely some unknown here with North. Absolutely. But I, I, I'm more focusing on the fact that... that Kane Corns would lead a campaign against their draft compensation allowances. I, I think that's a really good prediction. I like it. So I'll kind of group this with the next prediction from Brett Coles, who says North will be a lot better than most think. The year of the rise is 2024. And he says, PS North away ahead of West Coast. So I think I've commented or replied to this somewhere else from Brett. So I'll just rehash what I said. I did predict West Coast would finish higher by one spot than North Melbourne. I am not necessarily incredibly attached to that prediction. I'll stand by it, I'm not gonna backtrack. But the point of a ladder prediction is you try and apply logic. And I made a logical argument that West Coast experience would see them probably get through the season a little bit better if they have a better run with injury. North Melbourne, talented, absolutely talented. But backline worries me and I am a little bit unconvinced they can continue their best form. But their best form last year was good. So that is a question mark. Can they replicate that? I think it's possible, absolutely. As for North being ahead of West Coast, yeah, of course, absolutely. They've, you know, respectfully, they've been down lower, they've accumulated more talent, and they've drafted well, to their credit. And I think the prospects that they have are more advanced than what West Coast has. But I don't think that in itself is going to be a driver of North necessarily moving up this year. It's just, we might see the best in flashes, but over a 23 or 24 round season, it might be tricky. At least it's tough for me to bet on North Melbourne. But, you know, I have nothing against your prediction. 
Hash Burl NC says leading Brownlow vape getter to miss a war due to suspension. Now, statistically, this is possible. Like, it, it hasn't happened for a while. Maybe Chris Grant, I reckon, was the last one. I have a sneaky suspicion the AFL wouldn't let that happen. I reckon that they would probably bring it. I know, <laughs> I don't, I'm not really an AFL conspiracy theorist, but I do think the AFL does pull some levers. And at the end of the day, not, they're not changing the winner. They're just probably removing any controversy if somebody gets rubbed out for like a high head bump or something like that. Zach D says, Eagles fan here, but I think this season will be worse than last. Our team is too young and I don't think all experience is equal. Yes, some youngsters got some gains, but how beneficial is losing constantly and losing by a hundred points? We're in trouble. Okay, so clarify, this is not this is not about West Coast, whether they finish last or not. It's just about whether it gets worse than last year. And again, I'm sick of repeating myself and I know you're sick of hearing it, but I do think that is dependent on injuries. At the moment, injuries are still better than last year. They're not great, but they're better than last year. But I wouldn't undersell the, the benefits of having a lot of 25 to 26 year old guys fit again and in this team like that by default mitigates some of how bad last year got so you know we might just not lose any games by 30 goals <laughs> it doesn't guarantee us avoiding the spoon by any stretch but last year was really really bad and i am of the belief that it won't get that bad again and i take your point about you know that experience not being valuable i, th I think it will i think it's still gave them a taste of how fast AFL is. They've also got another preseason under their belt, so there's some upside there. I don't think the improvement's gonna come from necessarily the youngsters who have played heaps of games, with the exception of maybe Brady Hoff, but Jinby, Hewitt, I don't think these guys are gonna drive the improvement. It's gonna be like having Tom Cole back into the team, hopefully getting a bit more of McGovern. You know, I was hoping Matt Flynn would have an impact. He's out for three months. We'll see, we'll see. But I, at the moment, I don't think it's gonna be as bad as last year. All right, now we're at the point where I'm gonna throw some of my own out there. And I have made some ballsy predictions over the course of the year. So to summarize, you know, some of the predictions I've made this year so far, I tipped the Giants for the flag. I tipped the King Twins both as All-Australian in my All-Australian team, and I did tip Max King to win a Coleman medal. I tipped a drawn Brownlow medal between Nick Dacos and Sam Walsh. I tipped Collingwood to miss the four in my latter prediction, but again, like that's not necessarily a strong belief that I hold. And I tipped McCurchin for the Rising Star. So I'm gonna add some other ones. First of all, my, my first bold prediction. Bold? Okay, so my first bold prediction is that Essendon are gonna start the season two wins from their first seven games. And I suppose it's bold because it's specific. But let's talk about their fixture. They got Hawthorne in round one. now. On balance, with Hawthorne's injury list, I maybe maybe give Essendon in that game, but it's still not entirely guaranteed that they're going to win that game. They've got Sydney away in Sydney. That's tough. They've got St Kilda at Marvel, a strong Marvel team that starts seasons well and I think are better. Then they've got the Crows in Adelaide, who have a strong home ground advantage. They've got Anzac Day against Collingwood. So, so far, realistically, I think that's one from five. And then they've got West Coast at Optus. And you'd imagine they beat West Coast at Optus. Then there's a home game against GWS at Marvel. Now they could win that too. But on balance, I think GWS, it depends how they start the year. But I think that GWS are you know, potentially going to win the flag this year. I think they're a very strong team and should account for Essendon. So that is my logic for Essendon starting the season two and five. It's not hating on Essendon. It's actually, you know, as much as anything, observing that they, they've got a tough start to the year. And I do think they'll finish, you know, they won't finish in the bottom four or anything. My next bold prediction will be that Riley Sanders averages at least 24 disposals a game. That is kind of bold when you consider that Will Ashcroft only averaged 22 last year. Now, I'm not saying that Riley Sanders is better than Will Ashcroft. I just think with his tank and his ability to step up the level, he's got a big body. He's going to have no trouble, you know, getting spending time at stoppages. 24 a game is bold, and I'll, uh, I'll back him in. Similarly, on the Bulldogs note, this is a negative one. My prediction here is that Bailey Smith has played his last game for the Bulldogs. A bit of a punt, a little bit of a friend of a friend maybe told me that uh, somebody is looking for a house in Torquay. I said I wasn't gonna say that on the channel, but uh, I, do think, I do think Bailey Smith is gonna leave. Do I feel extremely strongly about that? No, but that is the point of this video. My fourth prediction is that Todd Marshall will kick at least 60 goals this season for the power. Now he's played, in the last three years, he's played 21, 21, and 21 games. In that time, he kicked 24, 45, and then 36. So we're talking about a pretty big jump here in output, but I do think he is getting to that age to mature as a key forward. And undoubtedly, in my opinion, will be the number one key forward at Port Adelaide this year. So Dixon sort of, you know, at the end of his career. We might even see Ollie Lord in this team more regularly last year. He finished the season well last year. There's Finlayson, there's Georgie Artis. And I just think around him, there is a little bit of uncertainty as to how that team shapes up. Or at least, you know, the team that we see in round one will be possibly very different to the team we see in round 24 or the finals for Port Adelaide. But Marshall is the constant there. And I just think 
there's a recipe there for him to have a big breakout year. 60 goals, lock it in. And the fifth one is a little bit of a piss take one, but I'm going to say that Jack Ginnivan gets dropped at least once for Hawthorne this year. My personal take is I don't think he's going to be as important or impactful for the Hawks as what is being suggested. And I don't blame Hawks for getting excited about having a guy that kicked 40 goals a couple of years ago into their team. But I do think, you know, with their depth of forward options, with, you know, Blake Hardwick now playing forward as well, I think Ginevan might have a, a trouble really locking himself into this team. It's a bit of a punt. I don't feel massively strongly about it, but there you go. That is my bold prediction. So there you have it, guys. I reacted to your bold predictions. I gave you some of my own. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. And for now, I'll say goodbye. See you later.